দর্শক বিরতির পর সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আমাদের আজকের বিশেষ অনুষ্ঠান এন ইভিনিং উইথ আনোয়ার চৌধুরী আমরা আনোয়ার চৌধুরীর কাছ থেকে জানলাম তার অভিজ্ঞতা সম্পর্কে কর্মের মাধ্যমে দায়িত্বের মাধ্যমে সেটি আমরা তার কাছ থেকে জানার চেষ্টা করলাম এবারে আমরা চলে যাচ্ছি অনুষ্ঠানের মূল পর্বে কনভারসেশন আওয়ারে যেখানে আমরা আমাদের সামনে আছেন ব্রিটিশ বাংলাদেশের কমিউনিটির অনেক তরুণ তরুণী সাকসেসফুল অন্টারপ্রনার এবং যারাই ভবিষ্যতে আমাদেরকে নেতৃত্ব দিবেন আমাদের কমিউনিটিকে নেতৃত্ব দিবেন আমি আর সময় নষ্ট করবো না আমি প্রথমেই চলে যাব কাশিফ কামালি হি ইজ দি অনলি ব্রিটিশ বাংলাদেশি স্টুডেন্ট স্টার্টিং অ্যাট ইটন কলেজ উইথ এ স্কলারশিপ অফকোর্স অ্যান্ড ইটন কলেজ হ্যাজ প্রডিউসড নাইনটিন ব্রিটিশ প্রাইম মিনিস্টার্স ইন দি ইউকে কাশিফ ইউর কোয়েশ্চেন প্লিজ মাই কোয়েশ্চেন ইজ What does one need in terms of life experience, academic merits and character to successfully advance into the upper echelons of the political arena? It is a a very good very good question. I think that'll be of of interest to many. But first of all, can I congratulate you on what you've already achieved? Um if you are seriously interested in 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 leadership roles and in success and for me it ca- it came down to five five things that i talk about and i won't go into it in any detail uh, the first thing and 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 people say it all the time is confidence but confidence where does confidence come from is is probably a better question and confidence really comes from comes from exposure it comes from experiencing different people different situations meeting different people putting yourself at some risk getting yourself out of the comfort zone leaving your community hard as it is going to an university somewhere else all of that so getting yourself get being confident is not something that you're born you you build it because once you see other people once you see other things you realize that you are as good as the rest that comes to many of us so confidence is 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 one Uh, the second thing is i would say communication communication uh, in the sense not not just orally but also in writing okay we are blessed uh with having the english language as our as our first language here uh the english language is simply power now speaking english starting is quite quite easy but to become master at it to be able to communicate to be able to share your dreams like luther king did your with the rest of the world and make it part of them it requires a level of skill in communication even in writing an email can you write an email so that it's actually delightful so the person who reads it looks forward to it so communication i think is 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 uh, hugely important curiosity the need to want to learn just getting your degree is never enough do you, are you curious enough so that people want to follow you I think having courage at the right moments are also it's not the courage to go and attack a hill but when you look at successful people it's what they do when they're down that makes a difference it's not what you do when you're up it's what you do when you're down many life experiences you know something happens to a member of family a divorce um financial problems uh some unlucky thing that's hit you So having the courage at that time to do the right thing to stay strong I think is important. And finally of the five things I've, I've I've said finally humility but genuine humility to know your limitations to know as I do uh and I think every successful person will tell you of course you need to work hard you need to get qualifications but in the end a lot of it 50% of it is luck. not to forget that the person you are sitting next to uh, the person you are sitting next to could have easily have done what you've done and more but maybe just the way life worked out the probability uh, but you know just to sort of uh, finish up with of course you have to create your own luck and as the joke goes you know you can win the lottery uh, and pray but in the end god will say look you need to come halfway and buy a ticket so you need to buy a ticket in terms of prepare yourself major bin ahmed another talented young lady uh, from our community um, f- she was a former student welfare officer at ucl ebong bortomane she ekjon gdl student major bin ahmed 
So you touched on your role about being High Commissioner to Bangladesh and how it was a revolutionary role for you. Um, I wanted to ask, being British Bangladeshi, did you find that that was an advantage to the role when serving as High Commissioner to Bangladesh or did it bring challenges? The, the job of a diplomat is to serve the interest of his country, Great Britain. Okay. I was lucky to be in a country where the interests both of Bangladesh and of Great Britain uh, were totally aligned. Um, and so I didn't face uh, some of the challenges, but there's always challenges when you, um, on how you do the job, um, on, you know, on corruption, on uh, your reputation as an individual. It's very difficult, you know, we are a family orientated community um, as a people, as Bangladesh, British Bangladesh and Bangladeshis and the Indian subcontinent. So I had to make sure that I separated uh, my duties away from friends and family very, very clearly. I think that was <laughs> one of the things I said, the first thing I said to my staff in the British High Commission is if anybody comes and says they're part of my family, give them minus 10 points to start off with, you know, so whatever, because that is just, and I think, um, I think it's important to set your principles. I have not had, I served four years in Bangladesh, not one individual came up to me and asked for a favor, not one. We'll go to one of our own, Kohinur Kabir, oh. uh, Channel S.A. Rekjun Uposthapika, presenter, and at the same time she is a recruitment business partner for a top tier investment bank. Kohinur Kabir. Some would say that one of the hardest things is to get your first uh, yes. the, you know, first role after university. Yes. Um, what advice would you give to the upcoming generation on how they can best prepare in getting their first role after university? Getting the first job is very, very difficult uh, because you don't have a proven history. And the straight answer, the simple answer to your question is not only having the background qualification, and, and now we have got a community and a country where getting a degree is 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 not as un you know it's not as uncommon as it used to be. So obviously qualification and all of that, but that doesn't actually make the difference. The difference comes from confidence. Okay, the first job that you apply to, at the interview particularly, it com it comes from the how you um, how you react, how you promote, how you present yourself, and within having done so many recruitment sort of things, within two minutes, a recruitment manager will know whether he or she wants to hire this uh, individual. And where does that confidence come from? Where does it come from? It comes from what we talked about earlier. It comes from getting yourself exposed and experienced in different life situations with different people, not just getting a first class degree. Many recruitment people, they've got 200 applications okay to sift through they can't you can't ask them to look through your case and make the case for you so you have to write in one page why you are the best suited person to that and remember it's not about you it's about what you're going to bring to this organization this company this government institution whatever this charity whatever it is and if you can get that down to a page why i am the most suitable why i can make a difference to your company they will interview you Parvati question, Jabra, and the question will be asked by Sabia Kamali, CEO, CEO, Sisters Forum. Sabia Kamali. My question is, as I work on the grassroots level, yes. with the constant rise of Islamophobia, right. um, discrimination or racism, how would we as British Bangladeshi or British Muslim identify ourselves? How would we redefine our identity? I am British. Full stop. Okay. I am not a Bangladeshi living in Britain. I love my heritage of Bangladesh, okay? I am also a Muslim. This country is my country. I am not going to be a victim in my own country. <laughs> I am not going to have my horizons curtailed by assumptions and barriers that sometimes are put up and sometimes are created in our own heads. Okay, so I have no conflict, as, as I hope I have demonstrated by being British High Commissioner in Bangladesh, of all places. 
that this is a false problem, actually. We do face barriers and discrimination. Islamophobia is on the rise. But as, as reasonable people, we need to see what is it that we can do to stop that. I actually believe that we should make more efforts to integrate ourselves. If you define yourself as a single identity, other people will react to you as a single identity. So those are things we need to think about. We need to make sure that we don't create barriers for ourselves. Imagine things that doesn't exist and fight the things that does exist, that is unfair. Stands to make this country even greater and make us even more successful and, 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 and prosperous. But don't become a professional something else. Don't become a professional Bangladeshi. You know, you're not, you're a Brit, okay? And this country needs you to make a success of yourself and of your, of your, of your country. So, and you can love Bangladesh, you can go there, you can invest there, you can do what you like. There is no country, there is nothing there at all. So let's not do that. And we must stay away from these temptations, these easy things to find ourselves labelled as, as, as something, you know, and, and then just behave accordingly to this label. This is, this is dangerous, this is unhelpful, this holds us back. Please don't do this. Tamanna Mia, a recent graduate and, and a campaigner from Kent. Tamanna Mia? Now, before Tamanna asks a question, uh, I would like to show our audience a picture. Uh, Tamanna, please stand up and then we'll show a picture. So, the oh. President of France, the Prime Minister of United Kingdom, and in the middle, we've got Tamanna. Tamanna, yes, well, clearly. What happened in that picture? Uh, I was at a reception at the VNA, and I'm one of the Franco-British young leaders, so we kind of linked together the France and the UK, and we kind of get young people involved in connecting the communities together to create community cohesion. So I went to a reception, and um, I met with the leaders, of course, um, Theresa May and President Emmanuel, and um, they have a fetish for photos, uh, they like taking photos. So I simply kind of met with them, shook their hand, talked to them about my community work, and uh, we had some nice conversations, and we asked uh, for a group selfie. So uh, that's how the famous selfie came about into every single newspaper uh, in the UK, and also in uh, online as well. So that was how it worked. Um, but it was a nice experience. Um, it was more about uh, communities. <laughs> Yes, I have a question. So, obviously, you've done a lot in public service. Um, how did you first come into the Foreign Office? Uh, what was your experiences? Um, if you could tell us a bit about that, that would be right. great. As you know from my career history, my, my first degree is in engineering because I really believed in uh, putting electricity everywhere because I thought that was the, that's the answer to development and all of that. Uh, and then through a career in engineering, MOD, Royal Air Force, Cabinet Office, so when I was in the Cabinet Office as uh, Director for Modernising Government, um, I had come across the Foreign Office quite a lot. And this original idea of trying to be of some service to uh, developing countries, uh, Bangladesh, uh, as well as others, by doing electricity, that concept stayed with me, although I didn't get to do what I wanted to do when I was a young guy. And then, um, uh, as it happens, I was doing a speech uh, for the Cabinet Office talking about modernising government in Greece, of all places. Um, and um, the Foreign Office knew of me, and they eventually invited me over. And I said, look, I'm not actually interested. Uh, because I have a great job, and I did have a great job in the Cabinet Office in there. Uh, but I am interested in this, which was to become High Commissioner. Uh, and then, as I uh, to Bangladesh, <laughs> um, and um, and then we went for a competitive. Our process is through competition, okay. Um, and I competed with I think eight other people, um, and um, uh, luckily I um, uh, I got through. Look, I went to a school in the East End. You know, uh, our young friend there is going to Eton. Okay, so you guys, you know, you're much better <laughs> prepared than I was. So all of you can do this. The, the variety of jobs that are open to you in public service, whether it's civil service or foreign service, is just infinite. Whether you're in the Ministry of Defense or in the Treasury or in DFID or 
wherever it is, education department, it is a whole world that you can spend 20 lives and still not, uh, uh, still not um, get to the end of it. So um, that's, that's how, how, how it happened in foreign languages. Once you're there, uh, we in the UK, we have subtle cultures uh, on the surface, but underneath those cultures are quite strong and thick. And to succeed in them, it requires a, a bit of understanding of how the civil service, how UK, how British people think, how we operate, our famous understatement, um, you know, the balanced approach, all of that. These sort of competencies you get to build up from, from the experience. And it's very important in the diplomatic service, as I, as I said, you know, the the central job of a diplomat is, the hardest job is to carry bad news without actually destroying the relationship. That's not so easy. Okay? That's what we really paid for. Dr. Ashfaq Choudhury, a head teacher and the chair for uh, Association of Muslim Schools. Dr. Ashfaq Choudhury? What opportunities would you think there might be for uh, British, of course, Bangladeshi heritage people, to look at education investment opportunities where you're going to be handed next? I know it's a bit premature question, yes, but I thought uh, I'd pitch it to you. Yes, well, uh, well thank you for that. But um, I, I, the way I look at education is uh, much more globally. For me, in my experience, there's two things you need to develop fast, education and infrastructure. It's those two things. So education, I think, is a market that is growing. There is huge opportunities in education, and we have one unique advantage and that's the English language. People want an education and an education in the English language, with the English language. A BSc chemistry is good from anywhere. BSc chemistry with English language is just that much more powerful and we have that as a natural advantage. Peru has now signed up to become bilingual in English by 2021. It will be the first South American country to do that. Uh, as a business, as, as well as teaching and all the rest of it, because it is a growth market, and it's quite an easy growth market for us because of the language, if you're talking about internationally. Naushad Ahmed, Associate Director, Equity Sales Trading. The question I had was, it uh, goes back a little bit, is um, I know you moved to the UK uh, at a young age from Bangladesh. Yes. Can you tell us about some of the challenges you faced and um, how you overcame them? At that time, 1970s, um, in in the north where I lived for the first four years and then in growing up in the east end of London. Racial discrimination was an everyday thing. Survival sometimes was the objective of the day. But just physically not getting attacked as a child, not being called, you know, um, names, uh, not coming home crying because somebody did something, threw something at you and all that. So those things, I, and I went to a school, I mean, it, it's still there, Daneford School, isn't it? Um, uh, and that area was a very rough area, and, and, and in Rochdale too, where you had to find enough reserve to not to allow that sort of thing to destroy you. Uh, that was a, a major challenge. And then, of course, in, in that time, um, as, as, as we know, our fathers, uh, our grandfathers, they, we only had one trade, and that's we finished school as quickly as we could and, and then opened a restaurant or worked in one, right? So I started that at the age of 14. I was working as a part-time waiter at the weekend. Um, and and, and, and to, at that time to think, look, I could do something else. You know, I could become a doctor, an engineer. Or something. And at that time, we were looking at the professions because they were the easiest thing to get a job in, right? So those overcoming those things and saying I can do something, uh, something more than this, maybe I'll do. Uh, so that, I think that uh, was a challenge. Poverty is always a challenge. If you're growing up uh, in a low-income household, you don't get to enjoy all the things that you see around you. Um, it's worthwhile reminding that life can be very different um, and have been very, very different. So we faced those, uh, those sort of... Uh, uh, challenges and I think um, I've um, luckily uh, it hasn't it hasn't destroyed uh, what what may have been destroyed thank you Anna Choudhury sure. next question uh, by uh, Tanvir Mahatab FCCA chartered accountant Tanvir Mahatab 
People often ask us about our success and our motivation. So I wanted to pose the same question to you. At this stage of your life, also as a new father, what motivates you? I think what motivates me is when I see, when I see that an interaction, something that I can do or have done, has made some small difference to somebody or something. If I think I can, by, through a job that I do, or something that I have done, can make a difference, a little bit of difference to that situation, to that interaction, that makes them happier, makes them proud, makes me proud. Uh, those things, I find, have a, a disproportionate impact on me. Obviously, my family, my <coughs> daughters, um, you know, uh, they, they, they motivate you. Uh, this community motivates me too, to be honest. This interaction, uh, I know it's meant to be the other way around, but it will motivate me. Saima Hussain, a medical student. Saima Hussain. Um, my question to you would be, um, what has been your biggest obstacle throughout your career so far and how did you overcome that obstacle? My biggest ob obstacle uh, to my career progress is me. Uh, it has to be me. Um, if I could be better at my job, if I could be cleverer, maybe I could go even further. I mean, this is not to say it's, it's not all my fault, but <laughs> what I'm saying, the biggest, biggest, um, uh, the biggest barrier is usually you. I wasn't a particularly good student at, uh, at science. You know, we have Dr. Rob here, who's a brilliant scientist. But, um, but I did engineering because the thing that motivated me is that I wanted to build electrical power stations everywhere because I thought electricity was the answer to poverty. So if there is a passion, if you have a passion, you really believe it, you're willing to actually put some work into it and not just talk about it. Talk about it also. Talking about it is important because then you, you get committed to it because you're embarrassed to say to people, I didn't do it. Talk about it, share it, but that won't be enough. Put some energy into it, do it, finish it, and then if it wasn't right, do something else. Thank you very much, Anna Chaudhary. Next question, Azmain. Zarif Nirjar, a very young, talented A-level student. Um, Nirjar? During your time in Bangladesh, yeah. you, would have, um, you would have been through the 2006 to 2008 political crisis. I was there from 2004 to 2008, yes. So, yeah, in, in that time, um, how do you think domestic political crises, how do you think they affect foreign diplomatic relationships? And especially against a background of corruption allegations against both party leaders and for both parties during that time. Yeah. Thank you. The job of the diplomat there is to understand, so you can't help not getting involved in the sense of understanding deeply what is going in, on in the country. That is, your, that is the whole point. The government has sent you there so that we can have a deeper, better understanding of the country that you are in. And but that some would argue that's a international or uh, Western uh, intervention in the democratic political system in Bangladesh? Well, understanding something is not intervention, it's understanding. Intervention is something that may come later if you uh, intervene. So what is, the, what is the job? The job is to promote the interest of your country, Great Britain, in Bangladesh. As I said to you earlier, uh, we were in the lucky position, we still are, that those interests are mutual. So on trade, on security, fighting extremism, um, on, on cultural issues, on education, on health, on all those issues that you can talk about, the international relationship spectrum. We were not, there wasn't a difference. Um, and it is also your job to say what your country's beliefs and values, your job is to promote those values. Now, if that is anti-corruption, then it is your job as an ambassador to promote that value and, and try and help uh, the place you are in to, um, uh, to achieve more in this, um, in, this, in, in this area. Whatever country you're in, you are forced to deal with the situation that you find. You then look at it as to does it affect our interests and values? If it does, it takes on a special sort of tasking a special role. If it doesn't, you try, you tend not to get so involved, but obviously you do get involved because your job is to understand and 
influence that country. And we influence through diplomacy, through persuasion. Uh, but in Bangladesh, uh, the, the greater threat at that time was, um, you know, um, was stability and the extremism. I mean, people have forgotten what happened in 2007, you know. We had the first suicide bombings at that time, you know, the, it was really, it was at a cliff. Um, and all of that, thank, you know, thanks to the Bangladeshi people, um, the administration at the time, has now receded a little. Uh, and it doesn't have to be like that. You know, you have seen other countries where things have fallen over. It has fallen over the edge. Uh, Bangladesh, I understand, um, is, is doing well economically. You know, obviously it has its challenges. Um, but um, if you're a diplomat, you've got to get involved. ধন্যবাদ আনোয়ার চৌধুরী দর্শক দেখছেন এন ইভিনিং উইথ আনোয়ার চৌধুরী আমরা কথা বলছি আনোয়ার চৌধুরীর সাথে আমাদের সাথে কথা বলছেন আমাদের আজকের অতিথিবৃন্দ যারা বিভিন্ন জায়গা থেকে বিভিন্ন প্রফেশন থেকে আজকের এই অনুষ্ঠানে যোগ দিয়েছেন অনুষ্ঠানের এই পর্যায়ে যাব ছোট্ট একটি বিরতিতে আমাদের সঙ্গে থাকবেন